If you are a bit late to the party for Defemeremba this year, don't worry, I've got your back. Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And if you have a look at my previous video for Defemeremba 2023, you will see how I put together this soft cover folder binder, which has the ring enclosure here and everything has been made out of parcel packaging and some cereal box and the usual scavenger things that we find. You can sometimes pick these up and they come as part of some revision cards in the back to school section so you can get them. Uh, you can get something that looks like shower curtain rings. You could really think that through. You don't have to have rings. They could be string. This could all be tied up. It just does not need to be perfect because it is a junk journal and therefore there are no rules and we are just having a play and defemeremba you've got to get out of your ordinary comfort zone and try something different because if you are interested in junk journaling if you are new to the craft and new to my channel you will see that we look for the mistakes. We celebrate the mistakes because when we make them, we come up with some outside of the box thinking and we come up with some really interesting ideas and that sparks off other ideas within the community and then they put forward those ideas and then we we ping pong them around until we've come up with something completely brilliant. So don't be afraid to have a go. And when people say, oh, I'm going to steal that idea, you're not stealing an idea. I'm giving it to you. And I've probably got that being influenced from someone else. So we are sharing. It's a very kind community and we're all very delighted to be part of it. So I am just looking at this folder and I'm really excited. It's come together and it's just fun. And that's the whole point. So Defemeremba is just a bit of fun. And so we've got the prompt list tucked away hiding here, but I've also got the prompt list here as well. And the first one was opening, so I did that for my opening. I know others are doing doors, but why does a door have to be wooden? This could just be the door to the little village, the clearing. This could be peering through the woods into this wonderful fairy land. And so that's my opening. Then we had a break over the second and the third. So I made these journaling cards which have got Effie's schedule on there and of course he went fishing but in reality I was cleaning the fish tank. And then we did the butterfly and three torn things and I've had lots of comments that you really liked the idea here where I've used the paper clips and they are just there to bind everything in and how we did that is um, oh ignore this I was having a little play I'm going to cover that up probably or maybe not see how I feel just to peel this up you can see that I've used this canvas sticky tape so it's a double-sided tape and then put fabric over the top you could do it that way and that so you just get your paper clip make sure that it's in the right place for it and then we just push that down and that's all trapped in there now. That's how we do that. So there we go. Good idea. Liked that little thing that I came up with there. So that was a fun idea. And on this one, we're now going to have a look at salvage birds and selfie in a bubble. Well, I have been avoiding selfie in a bubble. And it's one of the reasons that I started this project late because I just thought, oh, I don't want to do that one. And it's those sort of challenges that I feel we really must have a go at because that is outside of my comfort zone. So I am going to try and have a tackle of that one, see where we go. And the salvage birds, that was OK. Uh, there's a couple of techniques that I wanted to try there. So I'm going to show you that. I've already filmed some of that. I've got a very nice bird watching diary book here, which um, I have in my collection. And it is a book that I just love to look at and take inspiration from. It's not something that I would cut up I don't think because the paper is slightly shiny there's but the images are just lovely and it's just a really nice book and um, all about bird watching how wonderful you know it's just a lovely 
Oh, you just open the book and think, oh, that's nice, all the country ways. Let's make a little bird box, isn't that charming? And so um, in here is uh, some pictures, beautiful pictures of uh, the original sketches and also the birds. So, so I was having a look at the birds and some of them are very educational, the way that there's a study of the wings and the flight and the feeding of the young and all sorts of things like that. But there are some very nice birds here and I chose these birds um, because of the colour. I wanted something vibrant and colourful to come and live in the journal. I've got no interest in the journal or matching. Um, we can do that in normal everyday journals but for Defemerember I like it eclectic, I like it mixed up, I like it fun and so I've gone for these birds and I've traced them out on tracing paper. To try and get my bird images I'm using a technique I've used when I've made a stencil in the past and that is to use use tracing paper and to trace some birds out of a book. Uh, these are my birds and they've already been traced with pencil and then with washi tape I have stuck the tracing paper down over the top of carbon paper. This is a blue carbon paper and what I'm doing is the sort of, it's the sort of thing that you could put through a typewriter and print on and with the carbon paper what it's going to do is when I push down I'm going to be making a copy. So I'm using a biro here to go over my graphite line that I've used, my pencil line, where I traced out this bird. And I'm pressing down relatively firmly and then I'm going over the line. And then what we should see on the scrap of paper underneath is the transfer coming through. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to go over my image and transfer it onto this packaging paper, which is a salvaged piece of scrap paper from the packaging boxes. Okay, now I have my bird image and the blue lines have come out. I've added in a bit of detail with my pen and what I'm going to do is now add my scraps and colour and just add in some texture to these birds. It's quite a small piece but I found little scraps of fabric. These are bee eater birds and so the colours are blues and reds and oranges and I'm just going to use the little pieces that I've got in this tray and see what I can do. fun was that? It's so brilliant to see it all sped up. I hope you enjoyed that. If only crafting could be at warp speed, we'd get so much done, wouldn't we? Okay, I'm going to pull this over and we can have a look here. Um, so you can see in the journal that I've got some colourful bits coming in now and these birds are just a pop of colour, nice and festive. Why not? Let's just enjoy it. I don't want the journal, this particular one, or folder or binder or idea collecting device to be matching. I'd like it to be eclectic. I'd like it to be interesting and inspirational. It doesn't need to work as cohesive piece at all because these are just ideas. I'm just putting them in here as a little reference and that's why it's on a scrap of paper and that's good enough for me. That's fine. I will now look at this uh, in the new year and go, oh yes, that is a really good idea. And then I can practice the technique and refine it to something more interesting or more intricate for a journal in the new year. So I'm really pleased with that because it was so much fun. It was actually a lot easier than I imagined. So just using the tweezers and some glue, a wet glue, I used art glitter glue, I could get in there with the precision 
nozzle and I was able to use the tweezers and just manipulate the little scraps of paper and the fabric around and being able to move it and put it down where I wanted was really great. I like the scrappy results, I like the fact that it is um, a little bit fluffy and tactile and it just draws you in and it, it is fun. So I really thought that that was a really good idea. Um, definitely going to be using that. I've never done that before, I've seen it being done with lots of little pieces of paper but to have the mixed media, have the fabric and the paper was really good and I've got a little book print in there and it said something about watching and I thought that's fun bird watching so I like that it was good and just to point out I coloured in my acorns there with some shimmery mica watercolour paints and these come from Stacy Illustrations and I found her on Instagram and I have been following along with her because I bought her advent calendar palette and I have been working through those and opening them up. They were supposed to be for the 12 days of Christmas, but Stacy herself got too excited and she said that we could open them ahead of time um, as in a countdown to Christmas. So that's what we're doing there. So I've been looking at those and they're really nice and very nice colours, which I thought I'm introducing them because I think I might be able to use them for the next prompt which of course is selfie in a bubble and we've got some iridescent paints there so it's all coming together let's see if we can do something about this next prompt okay selfie in a bubble Okay, so I've printed out an image of me and you've seen this before at the end of my videos. And these were taken uh, a few years ago now on a good hair day. And I'm going to use the larger one for this idea. And if it doesn't work, I'll use the smaller one on a different idea. So I've never done this before. I'm going to have a go now. Okay, we're gonna have a go at this. This is going to involve the gel print, jelly print, um, gel mat thing, funny yucky thing that is something that I don't use very often. I'm learning quite a lot from Brigitte at Clee Black Creations so I'm coming, I'm warming to this but I will see if this works. No idea what I'm doing but I'm going to be using some darker colour acrylic paints. I've got a very dark navy blue and a dark purple and I'm going to put this down to see if I can get some sort of, ooh, some sort of image transfer onto here but I can't remember if I'm meant to put that down first or this down first, I don't know but it seems right that I should put the um, paint on if there's any left in the oh dear right I think that squirted out I'm just worried that there was a little I don't want bits in it it needs to be you know smooth all right let's just do this I'm concerned that there's bits on there. I don't want to have bits on my face. Hang on. Oh, goodness. Hang on. That looks a bit... Right, we just remove that. So it's just a dark blue and a thin layer. I, I don't know if I need to put more on. I can't remember. I have been told um, whether I need a thin layer or a thick layer. I don't know. Let's just go with that. All right, down I go, but I do vaguely remember that I need to wait a while for this to sort of adhere itself um, and push down. Just using this paper weight and I'm just putting some pressure on there so that I could really push that down. Okay, and now I want to see if I can lift this up. Mm. Nothing. Nothing's been, nothing at all. Right, well, well, that, I don't think that did us any good at all. Don't think that's worked. No, there's nothing on there. Although it did pull up the, uh, did pull up the ink. Don't like the colour. 
Right, well that has not worked and I'm now blue, which is not really what I wanted. Okay, so I'm putting more paint on to take the old paint off. That's the idea here. And uh, I just think this is so clever when people do it, but when you actually have a go yourself, it's sort of really complicated. Um, and there are just some things that I don't, I don't really shy away from many things, but I have to say that this seems to confuse me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't understand the layers. I'm just gonna roll this off onto this sheet, which I've got going on here. And ultimately this will become a tear sheet for some artwork in the future because that will be a nice drop sheet. Right, let's get rid of this paint here and create another scrap of something. How do we do this? Okay. Okay. Literally nothing. Absolutely not in a bubble whatsoever. I vacated the bubble, haven't got involved in that. My image has not appeared. Right, so all I've achieved is I've put myself in a blue splodge. So what I thought was going to happen is that I was going to be transferring this image so in some magical way onto this plate and then I was going to be pulling it off onto the gold shimmery background and then I was going to cut it out and everything was going to be marvellous. But what's actually happening is that I look like an extra from Avatar and I am now going to apply the shimmer on top of myself but I'm going to try and put some sort of bubble feature at the back there to somehow claw back this project into something that I would like. <laughs> um, meanwhile, happy news, I have found all my stencils. They fell down the back of the heater in the room. They've been there all summer but I have found them and I've got this. I've got this sort of bubbly stencil so I'm just now thinking I could do with a little tissue. Um, just remove some of that. I'll put this down on top of it and see if I can get those little circles to come up. Oh, okay, that's quite cool. Except now I'm so dark. That's gone. I've lost myself, haven't I? There's a skill and an act to this. You've got to sort of play around until you get there. I like that. That's better. That's kind of nice. How about if I put my stencil down and then roll and then try and put paint on the top of it? Does that is that a thing? Does that do anything? Does that work? There's, there's be lots of people that use these things going, oh, what is she doing? Literally no idea. No idea at all. Let's just have a go. I'm coating my... I'm coating my thingy. That's what I'm doing. Look at the mess. Right, I'm making a mess. Okay, so we've got that now. Right, let's remove that. So we've got some nice gold. So hopefully I just took the excess off there. Take that off. All right, so this is tracing paper that I was using for the bird a minute ago. And we're just going to use this. Pull this colour over here. And then putting down the tracing paper. So what I should have now is sort of a disco thing, sort of some black black paper but it might have some gold on it it might now my thing oh look okay bubbles all right i am in there somewhere i am in the bubble somewhere but this is not going to do it for me. I've got some sort of black situation here with some bubbles 
and I'm putting this to one side because I have concluded, uh, probably quite rightly so, that we cannot transfer an image using normal standard photocopy paper. Uh, you do probably need a specialist paper and I haven't got that and I'm not going to spend money getting that. So my image transfer idea has um, hasn't worked at the moment but we're going to try something else I'm now going to find some fabric okay I've got some cotton sheet here I'm just going to take some of this okay moving over to plan B I've got a paintbrush I've got some matte medium I've got my image that has got the acrylic paint all over it and I've got the one that is um, without. I'm going to take the matte medium and I'm going to paint it over the top of the image to begin with and then I'm going to do the same on this one. Now I'm going to paint the fabric, put down this one here and I'm going to put this one here All right, I'm just going to wash off my brush and leave this to sink in and see what happens when it dries off a bit because matte medium doesn't take long to dry so we haven't got too long to wait which is good news. So I shall be back in a moment. Okay, I'm a little bit impatient here. Um, it's not dried yet so I'm just going to see what's happening. So it looks like it's taken the paint everything's becoming quite sticky it's also taking the paper mm. what's happening here if I pull that okay so I'm not sure what's happened there but I appear to be sort of on this fabric. Let's move this one off. Oh okay look that's worked. I'm in I'm on the fa Ooh. okay I'm on the fabric. So that's how that looks. So this is just paper then. Alright. So some of the paint has come off. All right, I think I'm going to separate them. And then I can work on them individually. Okay, so I have um I've I've transferred over onto the fabric and then we've just got a bit of some paper there. Interesting. That's kind of fun because it looks a little bit diffused and there's a pinky tone there where Wait, maybe if we make it more bubble-like, that might look a bit like like a bubble. I was slightly hoping that we might have got a bit of that gold bubble effect. Right, I've got a little dish of water here. I'm just going to wash the whole thing off because it's quite sort of gloopy with that glue. All right, I feel like I've got a bit of deja vu because I've gone back to how I was before with the white squares and the image on it. Only this time it is on fabric and I've managed to wash off all the paper. There is a slight stiffness to the fabric now because of the matte medium that didn't fully wash out. Um, some of the image has been reduced and faded this is where we're at. I'm now on fabric but I'm not in a bubble. <laughs> so when I've washed it the acrylic paint has come off away from the, this fabric but I do quite like the way that there's a sort of an outline and I'm just wondering if I could do an impression uh, to make it like a bubble and then I can add my glass into this mixture. All right, and then I'm going to add it over the top 
of the image. Okay, I'm just going to paint this around the edge. Now I'm not going to want that, so I'm just tipping that out. And then I'm just going to put that down there. Okay, now I'm going to go again, but this time I'm going to add in some metallics. I've got a metallic blue here and a metallic gold. So I'm putting my glass back into this metallic -y mixture and I'm going to go down again. Okay, that's better. I like that. Let's just do some impressions here while I've got it. Round the rim of this pot, making a lovely mess. <laughs> and then we will add that down. Okay, let's see if we can make it a double circle. I'm just going to fill that in. Be a bit of a funny bubble. Maybe it's a bubble that's about to pop. Okay, I've dried them off and they're looking good. So this is the metallic sort of imagery that we're getting here. It's a little bit rustic, a little bit grunge. I, I want to do that in this journal because it helps me to learn. It pushes techniques which I can then refine later on and bring into... Um, you know, more sophisticated projects if you like that's that's the aim anyway I really love the back of it that's lovely that is just like an inked stain from an old you know if we made this dark brown I've learned that's a wonderful technique that's great I can now make it look like a fountain pen has leaked or an old ink well has spilt somebody's put the ink down onto the top of, of something although it's quite big but you get the idea you know that is really lovely just playing around so the metallic has stayed on the top and you know that's okay but that's really lovely I like that side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out um, as sort of a bubble shape, uh, roughly I think, because I quite like the edging of this. And this, well, how about this? I like that. Okay. I'm using these little watercolour paints and I'm just putting in some of the shimmery colour here on the outside edge just to give us a little bit more of an idea that this could be a bubble. I'm just going to paint over everything now. I'm going to darken the edges with a little bit of this watercolour. It's also got some gold sparkle in it, so I just sort of allow allow the bubble to pop out a bit more, I think. And here we have a couple more projects into the journal. So I'm really pleased how these have come about. So we can now tick off the salvage birds and selfie in a bubble. And here's how they look in the journal. So we've got the butterfly there. And then here's the salvage birds today. And looking really sweet. Let's just give you a close up. There we go, a little bit of junk journaling. Ability to write underneath, make some notes, and also we then can come over and we've got some scrappy bits there. That's all ready for something else to go on. What I've done here is put this over here this way round. So I've got a little bit of embellishment, little little dangle there, and that is just an eyelet that misfired and, and went wrong. So it's squashed, but it didn't squash correctly. So I'm waiting. I've got another one floating around here somewhere, and when I find it, I'll put it on there. But I think it must have made its way onto the floor. I've got a little bead, if not, so I'll put that there. So if I can't find the matching one, I shall 
use the bead, but it's just good because it's a little piece of, you know, junk really. It's nothing much you can do with that. So I've turned it into a bead. So it's another nice idea. And yeah, I do appear to be in a bubble. So there we go. Twice, in fact. And when I come over, I really like this ink effect here. So I shall definitely use that going forward onto pages. I think that would look really pretty. You could just imagine some nice die cuts and things up the side and decorate that with flowers, maybe um, sew on to that with slow stitching. That would be really nice all the way around here. Obviously have something else in the middle, not yourself, but you could have a family member and that's how that works. So that could work in a modern journal. And if you want to decorate it with your own family, like a really nice family picture could be there, but black and white may be washed out and then some flower embroidery all the way around to make that circle frame. So it's just, it's it sparks off some ideas. These, These are just the very raw, rough ideas that could then be turned into something much more interesting later on in a journal. And this is a polka dot paper. So I can tear that out and use that if I want to. And again, just some nice, interesting paper effects. So that's how that's looking. And I can stick some journaling in there if I want to. Write some notes about what I did here. And I've got a little pocket that I've created there. You can add some scraps in there and then that's all something that we can put some die cuts on there I mean you know loads that we can do that's just a background that hasn't been embellished yet so there we go so that is selfie in a bubble and then the next one after that clocks and wings so we're going to have a look at that I'm going to leave the project there but if you would like to follow along with the Defemerembe in order I shall leave the videos in a playlist called Defemerembe 2023. You'll be able to keep them all there and then if you'd like to pick this project up further in the year you'll be able to follow along and make your own ideas journal and see how you tackle the prompts if you want to. So there we go, they'll all be there as a nice resource for you and you can have a look and see how to make this journal. I've definitely discovered techniques that I haven't practiced before and the image transfer is very exciting to see that that worked with just an inkjet printer. So there we go I'm going to leave it there but thank you very much for watching and do subscribe to the channel and above everything else just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now! Mm -hmm.